How do you do? I'm Dusteroo. Recently I've been playing with a friend of mine who got back into Dead by Daylight after a long break. Due to some of the recent matches, I don't think he'll be back for very long. Right now though, he's going through an experimentation phase where he's trying out new perks and perks that he used to use a lot when he played a couple years ago. There were perks that he used because he liked to use them, but also most survivors would too. They were meta perks. Must picks are always useful in any build you made. But as he told me he was using them, I scoffed. I audibly scoffed. I said, why would you use them? Then a sad thought washed over me. These perks were staples for large portions of the game's lifespan. Ones that you would see in almost every match. But now even the thought of using them just seems like... a waste. They went from the top to the bottom. Almost an afterthought. A quick joke. So came the idea for this video. How do we turn these relics of the past into something quality today? This is Reviving 3 of Dead by Daylight's Old Meta Perks. So how this is happening is I'm going to show the perk and give a brief description on its past and its flaws in the current iteration. Then I'm going to suggest a change or a rework to make the perk a little more something to gawk at, and perhaps fill a role of a perk we don't already have. For those who have been around at least three years will understand what a fantastic perk Iron Will was. A simple perk in design, at tier 3 it completely removed all survivor groan noises while injured. That does not sound too strong, right? You're wrong. This was, for most of the game's lifespan, debatably the strongest survivor perk in the game. Even if it wasn't in the top, you knew in your heart of hearts Anything below top 5 was the equivalent of lying under oath. A crime. Iron Will did so much more than just let you hide away from the killer's location while injured, make a cheeky locker play, or hide in a corner while they ran past. This was strong, but the true potential in this perk's power was in Chase. Huh? Chase? Why does it matter if your groans are silent in Chase if they can see you? Hear your footsteps, right? Yeah, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that Dead by Daylight has had a Walmart bargain bin of bugs and technical issues over the years. Sounds were always pretty high on that list. It was very common for the important tracking tools like footsteps to either be non-existent or soften dramatically like they were in another room, but you were just looping around a rock. So this made mind gaming at many loops a very difficult task, as a lot of the times you will not have good indicators of where the survivor was or is going if your line of sight was blocked. You can be doing a double fake moonwalk at a loop only to find out that they left 10 seconds ago, and the distance is just too much to follow up on. You lost that chase. Iron Will in the hands of people who didn't even know how to wield its full potential still got a lot of value without knowing it. Those who did, though, could devastate the killer. This perk was a part of the mass casualties that took place on July 19th of 2022 in the patch 6.10, or more commonly known as the Meta Shakeup patch. Which is where we have current day Iron Will. Grunts of pain reduced from 25, 50, and 75% while injured, with the caveat of this perk being disabled while exhausted. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't, but this perk is a shadow of its former self. It's making a comeback recently thanks to Made For This becoming THE meta perk right behind Windows of Opportunity. 75% reduction to sound is still quite useful and can be quite helpful. I would not mind if they just made it 75% forever, but it's the exhaustion effect that kind of buries the perk under the mountain of alternatives. Get him out of here! I'm not gonna say this perk is bad, it's still pretty highly picked. Now that Made For This is king, well, queen. If you're using this perk without Made For This, you either need to run a no exhaustion build or even dead hard. You're really not getting much value out of it otherwise and are probably better off just running something else. The aspect me and my friends missed the most about this perk was the actual stealth component of it. Like hiding mid chase or stealthing behind a rock as you know the killer is on their way. A genuine I'm injured 
but I can still hide kind of perk. It also feels more fitting for what the perk was originally meant to be. It was for hiding and not making stronger chases. So, my proposed rework for this perk focuses more down the stealth aspect and less of chase shenanigan. My proposal, Iron Will. Sounds of grunts are reduced by 50, 75, and 100% while crouching. While walking, the noise reduction is 25, 50, and 75%. The goal with this change is to make those moments where you really need to not be heard by the killer at all possible. No downside to the perk, just an overall reduction in noise. If you need to be dead silent or want to hide in a corner mid-chase and have the killer run right by you, you can. But if you need to readjust your location, you're not forced to stay crouching. Your walking speed is very quiet, but not silent. How much stronger would this be? I don't know, weaker maybe. But to me, when I see Iron Will, I don't really want to put it in my stealth builds that often, and almost never go for chase builds. So I think having its own role as a very strong stealth tool, especially since Jake is a free character, and new players will be using this perk, it'll be a massive help to them in particular. At the very least, I think behavior should remove the exhaustion penalty and we're pretty much golden. Time to move down the ladder from a perk that has its role in specific builds and scenarios to one that is not bad, but kind of redundant. We are talking about Borrowed Time from Bill Overbeck. Damn straight. Borrowed Time was more of a perk that was ran out of necessity more than it being good. It was good, but most of the motivation for running this perk was if I don't, the camper is going to hit the unhook immediately the moment I take them off. And now we are in a 3v1. People ran borrowed because camping and tunneling off the hook was the most effective strat for winning a match quickly. Of course there were some juicy benefits like a borrowed time person being able to supply body blocks for a large amount of time, allowing for the saver who likely took a hit in the unhooking enough time to get to a loop or maybe another body block. This perk's current iteration was introduced in the meta shakeup patch. <laughs> Most of the purpose for this perk's popularity is pretty much gone. Why do you need to bring borrowed time if we already have a slightly weaker version on all survivors? You don't. And the numbers kind of reflect that. After unhooking a survivor, add 10 seconds to both endurance and the haste effect for the unhooked survivor. It's good, but not necessary at all. Most interactions that go down where the endurance is needed goes basically two ways. I've been unhooked and the killer is tunneling me out. Just to speed up the process and make things a little harder for me, he's going to hit me and get rid of my endurance. I speed boost and I make it to a loop or a window and the chase begins again. Then the other alternative where the killer is waiting out my endurance till the last second and usually, not always, but usually there should be some resource I can make it to before endurance runs out. Of course you can't make it to resources every time, but the speed buff paired with the endurance in a lot of cases is just enough to find salvation. We do have to talk about the body blocking aspect though, where people who are just unhooked go for a body block. No, 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 Just go around it. He's not going to hurt you. Just go around it. No, 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 no. This is the only place that borrowed time actually excels in where the killer would just expect you to have a 10 second timer and wait it out, surprise, borrowed time. Unless they just suspect you're using off the record and hit you early, which a good killer probably will. You should probably just use off the record instead. Don't forget this only applies on unhooked survivors, so good luck getting your randoms to leverage that borrowed, because most of the time they're just gonna see it as a free escape. I have two ideas for what I feel could be a cool change to borrow time that still fits the name. After unhooking three survivors, once per trial while on the hook, you can activate a 15, 20, 25 second stall to the hook timer. Or, alternative, after unhooking a unique survivor while on the killer's terror radius, you earn a permanent three, four, and five second increase to your overall hook timer. So if you were to rescue three unique survivors, you earn a 15 second increase to both of your hook times, 
your total hook time in the match is extended by 30 seconds. Hook timers are a very scary thing to propose adjusting, as even a small number could have rippling effects we can't even see. With some fiddling on the numbers, I think either of these ideas could have a place in the game as a good punishment to camping killers. Cause what does a timer really matter to those far from a hook? Well, it can mean a lot of survivors know they can just finish whatever task they need to first and not put themselves into a dangerous situation. But in more situations, I feel survivors are more likely to go for the rescue earlier than not. But you always do have to keep in mind of survive with friends. Both of these just sound like borrowed time, don't they? You help your fellow survivors for a little bit of extra time in your most dire situation. With the requirements to unhook unique survivors or just get a certain amount of unhooks overall, it helps limit the usage in the match to two times, at most three times, but that would have to be a very lucky or coordinated team. And I don't know, reassurance for the self seems like a cool concept to me and would actually be a very interesting perk to use and could be very powerful against particular hook camps. It's time we talk about the greatest fall from grace, a perk so strong and so abusable that when its rework came around, Behavior thought the only way to contain its power was to break both of its legs and tie it upside down in a tree. That's right, it's Object of Obsession. This may very well be the most broken perk they have ever had in the game at any point. Excuse me. Eh, I guess there's you, but I still lean towards Object. Object of Obsession when it first launched, if you were outside of the killer's terror radius, you could read up to a total of 72 meters if the Obsession, and only a measly 64 meters if you weren't the Obsession. You could see the killer's aura if you were looking in their direction. Sure, they could see yours, but they're not the one with possibly three other friends being told of the exact killer's location. Also, this worked on Wraith and Myers, as Undetectable was not in the game yet. Even after the introduction of Undetectable, this was just permanent wall hacks whenever you wished. So incredibly busted, and even more incredibly unfun for Killer. After a disastrous answer from the devs and some time, we finally got the change to rid this game of this hideous skin tag. We were given the change to Object of Obsession during the great meta shake Ah, uh, you thought, you thought. No, no, it was actually May 4th, 2021. Which gave us, and let me get the notebook out for this one. <clears throat> the entire duration of a killer reading your aura has their aura revealed as well. A 100% chance to become the obsession. While your aura is revealed, you have a 2, 4, 6% increase to action speed. And if you are the obsession, reveal your aura every 30 seconds to the killer. Before I rip in, let me just tell you that this paired with Distortion can be a very fun perk that I actually use from time to time. Right, time to rip. The 30 second timer on your aura revealed to the killer can be useful, and there is counterplay around your aura being seen. The amount of time you waste running to the closest locker if you really don't want to be revealed, and the fun habit of it almost always proccing at really bad times. Pair in with putting allies in danger if you're healing near them or doing any objective nearby. Gives players tons of reasons not to equip this perk. I get to see the killer's aura every 30 seconds. Yippee! If the 30 second timer was removed from this perk, I think just having the aura reading when you are revealed could be a very cool concept. And I think there's something there. My proposal. Object of Obsession. Anytime your aura is revealed to the killer, you see their aura for the entire duration. Increase the odds of becoming the obsession by 100%. Anytime your aura is revealed to a fellow survivor, they are revealed to you. I think the reading of the killer's aura while being seen is an amazing idea for a perk. And I think it can be a very strong tool in being able to read what kind of aura reading perks you're dealing with. Giving those with the knowledge to be able to quickly figure out enemy tactics and perks and play accordingly. I don't think this alone would make a strong perk though. While it's nice always knowing when you're seen, it relies heavily on the killer running a aura reading perk to get any use out of, which is not consistent at all. 
it's not even like you can make a build around it to make it stronger and proc the effect more often. So the effect of also seeing teammates' auras after being shown on theirs, like replicating empathy or bond for only that particular teammate, is a strong one. But it is also one you may not get consistent value of either. But with these two effects combined, you can get a solid enough chance to always get value out of this perk every match you play. Especially when playing with a group. So, that was the three old meta perks, or what used to be strong perks, that I think could use a change. What do you think? Do you prefer the versions of the perks we have now? Do you miss some of the older versions of these perks? Is there any other perks you think should be changed? Let the people know down below. And finally, thank you all for watching. I'm Dusteroo, and I will see you all real soon. Bye bye